All right, I want to get back to system and dashboard so that we have the uniform starting point with regard to talking about the final core fabric service that I want to make certain that we know how to enable. And again, this is going to be done on a fabric-wide basis. Now, oddly enough, what I need to do is configure MPBGP. Now, we're going to talk about these protocols. But first what I want to do is I want to demonstrate what's happening in the system and I'm going to do that by actually SSHing to my spine. I'm going to SSH to spine one, log in, and there's going to be some commands I want to execute here. So the first one is going to be a, a show ISIS adjacency command. And what we're going to see is, is ISIS is actually running, oh, I forgot the VRF all so I can see everything. But what we're going to see here is ISIS is actually running. And we see here that I have formed a neighbor relationship from this spine via these system IDs that I'm connecting to. And I happen to know that the devices that I'm connecting to in this scenario are going to be the leaf switches. So if I come over, let's say show um, LL, actually I don't even know if I can do show LLDP neighbor here. It's been a while. Should, should be able to execute it. So if I take a look at the configuration, we see here that I'm connected to the different leaves and we see I'm connected on Ethernet 1.1, Ethernet 1.1. I'm connected on Ethernet 1.2, Ethernet 1.2. If I do a show IP interface brief, I'm going to see that these sub-interfaces were dynamically created by the system in order to allow these connectivities. So I see Ethernet 1.1 38 and Ethernet 1237, and we see that they are taking their IP addresses via IP unnumbered from the loopback zero interface, which is, has been issued the IP address of the VTEP. So we get this address from the APIC via DHCP. We dynamically run ISIS for the express purposes of exchanging VTEPs between devices that are in the fabric. So if I come over here and say show IP route for ISIS, well, I may not even be able to do ISIS, I may have to just simply do show IP route and then say VRF all. Show IP route, VRF all. Let's see what the routing table looks like. And we should see ISIS routes. So we see ISIS prefixes and we're learning via a level one, and we're going to talk about the, uh, the aspects behind how ISIS operates, intermediate system to intermediate system. So we can see here there's a lot of information. In fact, there's more information than we really, really need to know. So the main goal is, is to understand that ISIS, ISIS, intermediate system to intermediate system, exists inside of the ACI fabric for the sole and express purposes of actually advertising the VTEP address that was assigned via DHCP and we want to assign that or advertise that to all of the other devices that are in the fabric. So ultimately what we do through the use of ISIS we get end-to-end -end reachability. Now there's other protocols. There's council vertical protocols. We need to talk about um, station tables and some other things that we're going to definitely hit. But right now the main goal is to understand that we are currently running ISIS we are currently running LLDP, and by default, show CDP neighbors is traditionally not enabled. So there's no entries in the configuration. Now, obviously, I could modify that behavior possibly, and we're going to implement that again through the concept of policies. But another thing that I could do is show IP BGP summary VRF all and what we're going to find is is that there's no BGP process running. Now not only do I want to activate a BGP process, I want to use MPBGP and I also need to configure a route reflector which means I need to make spine one a route reflector. So in order to do this I have to decide what the autonomous system is going to be that I'm going to be running inside the fabric and I said in the lecture we were going to use autonomous system number 100. That's what we're going to configure and we're going to configure it under the system 
system settings values and you'll scroll down just a little bit and you're going to see BGP route reflector configuration and all I'm going to do is just click it it's not a right click I'm going to come in and I'm going to configure by default autonomous system 100 and I'm going to tell it which device I want to be the route reflector I'm going to hit the plus sign here and I'm going to say spine node 201 is going to be my route reflector I'm going to go ahead and hit submit now it's going to say, hey, we're going to apply this to 101, 102, and 201, and it's going to be applied under this policy group. Now, if I submit the changes, let's take a look and see what happened. So from the perspective of the equipment, if I come back up here and I repeat the show IP BGP summary VRF all command, we're going to see I'm not really seeing too much of anything, but I am seeing the VRF management I'm seeing a VRF of overlay but let's see if we can say show IP BGP and I want to look at um, let's see if I have any neighbors so instead of summaries let's see if we have a neighbor and again I think it's going to be VRF all and let's see if we've actually formed any adjacencies and we have now why did we form the adjacency dynamically well, we form the adjacency dynamically because if we look at the show usage, we have an active policy group. So in configuring it here, what ends up happening is, is it sees that policy group applied to the pod and just inserts itself in that listing. How do I know that? Well, what we'll do is we'll go to fabric. We'll go to fabric policies. We'll go to global policies. We will go to... Um, uh, no, we won't. We'll go to pod policies and we'll go to policy group the one that we created and we see here the ability to apply the BGP route reflector notice it doesn't list a value here so let's see if I can actually configure something but notice it says pretty much select a value but it says the configuration is for the default now if I go back to system and we look at this what I did is I didn't create anything special I just configured it under the default so it was inherited just understand this and that is, is if that policy group does not exist then this configuration cannot propagate itself all the way across so if you created the route reflector policy here under the system settings first and you had not created a policy group under your pod policy group configuration you would have to go in and create a pod policy group and then you would have to assign the BGP route reflector status so just keep in mind we know that it's been applied because I see here that it's applied to these devices and it's been this policy the where it was applied and I also know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it has been applied because I have neighbors that I have formed relationships with so show IP BGP neighbors now I'm not learning any prefixes that's what the, the issue here is if I come over here and say show IP BGP IPv4 unicast and we go through and we look at this uh, values like the next top database and things along those lines when we take a look at it what we're finding here is, is this is not giving me any information about the BGP protocol so the only way that I know that anything is happening here is, is if I again execute that show IP or show BGP excuse me uh, we wanted to say neighbors VRF all now I could look specifically inside of a particular VRF so as an example I could say instead of VRF all I could say overlay dash one and that's going to be the overlay configuration if I spelled it right which I did not so let's see overlay oh no capital so it'll be I thought it was capitalized overlay one the ACI is unforgiving and it's definitely a case sensitive construct so just keep in mind we have these values it tells me I'm using port 179 so I know I'm operating as a uh, configuration of the local port which means I'm the server the foreign port is the uh, an ephemeral port it's a high port so we know that that guy is a client and we take a look at here we see we have VP, v, VPN v6 addresses we have VPN v4 addresses that we implement and that tells me immediately that I'm supporting address families which means I'm running multi-protocol 
BGP as a direct result of this configuration. So what we've done right now is we've accomplished everything that we said that we were going to accomplish and that included the creation of an out-of-band address range, the assignment of DH DHCP, dynamic host configuration, I'm sorry, the assignment of DNS uh, configuration, the creation of the NTP configuration and then ultimately enabling multi-protocol BGP at its bare minimum. It's running. Now we need to understand the question because remember we said DHCP existed to issue the IP addresses to the host in the form of the VTEPs. We said LLDP existed for the purposes of allowing discovery to take place in the fabric so that we can actually implement configuration and monitor that configuration. It also stands to reason that LLDP will dynamically be running towards the network infrastructure because at the end of the day we have to be able to communicate devices that aren't just Cisco. So we want to make certain that we use an industry standards protocol to recognize them at layer two. We know that ISIS exists for the sole and express purpose inside the infrastructure to be able to exchange information that, about the VTEPs that have been assigned to individual devices. We also have known and know that we are going to enable BGP by creating a route reflector using this BGP route reflector policy and applying that under a policy group. But we haven't addressed why we need that BGP route reflector and we're going to actually get into it when we talk about layer 3 connectivity to external routed infrastructures. And when we look at it, we're going to not only be looking at BGP, but we're also going to be looking at an IGP protocol specifically we'll be looking at OSPF in my labs, but we could use ISIS, we can use OSPF and we can use EIGRP for those configs. So I hope this has helped you guys understand the fundamentals behind what are referred to as core fabric service implementations. There are other core services. I just chose not to implement those in this workshop. The main idea is, is that from henceforth all interactions with the ACI will mean that all of these configurations have been actually implemented and configured. So with that being said, what we need to do now is we need to turn our attention to logical constructs. Logical constructs are going to be how I'm going to subdivide my infrastructure between multiple tenants. I'm going to be able to ass assign multiple tenants specific resources. I'm going to emulate routing behaviors because at the end of the day we're working with a para virtualized distributed switch so in a way, it's kind of similar to the way that we would do things like in VMware. We'd create a virtual distributed switch and we would create a series of port groups. Devices would be connected to the port group. They'd be able to communicate with each other. We're going to find out that we're going to have very similar, in fact, almost a one-to-one -one parity in some instances of certain logical constructs inside of the ACI that provide similar functions. So what this is going to do is this closes our discussions about the actual fabric and then what we need to do is turn our attention to constructs like tenants, virtual routing and forwarding instances, bridge domains, networks, application profiles, and endpoint groups. These are going to be things that we need to understand before we can fully even expect to be able to do even basic implementations inside of the ACI in order to be able to provide similar network functionality as that that we've seen and deployed in legacy or traditional network topologies. So with that being said, let's wrap this particular portion of the video. I'm Terry Vinson and I'd like to thank you for learning Data Center with me.